Hey, what's up, you guys? Last week we did a rundown of the seven deadly sins, but today we're trying to be a little lighthearted to give you the seven virtues. In contrast of the seven deadly sins. That's right. These are the gifts that God gives you versus what the devil tries to put in your head. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And tap the notification bell so you get notified when we post a new video. Subscribe, it helps us out. If you watch our videos anyway, you might as well subscribe. I'm gonna say all of them at once and then I'll go into detail of each. So we have humility, charity slash love, chastity, gratitude, temperance slash self-control, patience, and diligence. This is not in any particular order. We're gonna start with humility. And the definition we came up with is basically just to humble yourself. And the Bible verse for this one that we give was James 4.10. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. Yeah, that's so important. Not just to humble ourselves to one to another, but also to God. When we pray, we humble ourselves. Mm -hmm. I think it's very easy to get a big head or like just get so caught up in something that you just need to be taken down a notch. Yeah, pride is the opposite of humility. Mm -hmm. Charity slash love and the definition we came up with is to serve others. And I wanted to add that for love, God is love. And we didn't choose this verse, but in 1 Corinthians 13, yeah, 13. you could replace God with any of those sentences like love is kind, God is kind. Love is patient. God is patient. Or even your own name, like Dustin is patient, Dustin is kind, and like that's what God wants to produce in you. Set yourself to that standard, like trying to be. As she was coming up with this, her Bible verse was Colossians 3.14. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. That's a good verse actually because Jesus tells us the two most important commandments is love God with all your heart, mind, and soul, but also to love others. Yeah, love your and neighbor. The clear ingredient here is love. It binds all that up. Mm -hmm. I believe it was 1 Corinthians 13, 24, which says these things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. But above all these things, love. Also, in First Corinthians, I think it's 13. If I don't have love, I'm nothing. We should strive for that yeah. and to have a heart of love. You can do everything under the sun, but if you don't have love in your heart, then you don't have anything. Right, number three, chastity. And the definition we came up with is purity slash modesty. And it's not like a type of modesty where you're like dressing. It's not an outward appearance. It's modesty of the heart. It's where your heart's at and your intention. I feel like we need to watch our intentions mm -hmm. because I know that some of us, if any one of y'all can relate to this, that when we don't have Christ, we don't have that standard. But when we have Christ, we're putting on like a new role. That's why I feel like the Christian term for modesty and purity is putting on a new role, putting on a new standard by which we can operate in. And chastity, which purity, it's the opposite of lust, which we talked about in the seven deadly sins. This goes for really anything that you're struggling with. I saw something the other day that said, remember that when you are living with God, that you're gonna be attacked the most by the devil. And you're wondering why are people who are not living with God, they're having all these things, this nice life. The devil knows that he already has their soul. So he's not gonna try to attack them. He's like, they're, they're coming with me at the end of the time, like they're coming with me to hell. He's not gonna try hard to bring them down because they're already living that way. But when he sees us with God, he does not want God's plans to be lived out in us. Yeah, he wants to keep us there. Have all these things, but what is that for if we're not giving it to God? Oh yeah, and the Bible verse. <laughs> First Corinthians 6, 18 through 20. We from sexual immorality, Every other sin a person commits, it's outside the body. But the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? 
you are not your own, for you were bought with a price, so glorify God in your body. We are not our own, we are God's, and our body is a temple, so we should try to honor it. While I did say modesty, it's like of the heart and not necessarily outward appearance, but at the same time, you want to take care of your body and make sure your health's good because you want to be a temple for the Holy Spirit, so you should be taking care of yourself even if that comes with like the outward appearance take your vitamins get your exercise get your spiritual exercise the fourth one's gratitude and the definition we came up with is giving thanks i'm just reading the verse here and it says be thankful in all circumstances and first thessalonians 518 be thankful for all circumstances that's kind of hard for a lot of us this life that we live it's some of it is not like pleasing some of it is not going to turn our way but we should still be thankful because it does provide a lesson we should be thankful for jesus dying on the cross for us he's the reason why we can be saved for this is god's will for you who belongs to Christ Jesus. When I read that, I think of Paul. He was in prison, basically flogged for his faith, mm -hmm. but he still didn't do wrong. But while he was in prison, while he was being persecuted and being arrested, he still thanked God and he made every opportunity with his faith. I think it was in the book of Philippians when he said, even though that I'm still in prison, I'm still witnessing to others and that's why i think of of a heart with gratitude even though that it may look like there's no way it might look like i can't measure up to a standard that i want but really the standard that god wants is for you to be willing and just for that we should be thankful and number five temperance slash self-control finding maturity in one's desires when you want to do it but you choose not to we just came out of a men's conference we oui, that'll be you uh, yeah, sorry. And we was talking about like accountability, <laughs> maturity, and stuff like that. And the only definition that I could come up with with Christian maturity is when we do get tempted, is when we do have this like desire to do something that doesn't please a guy, but yet we don't do it. It's not. It's finding self control. Yeah. It's not a sin to be tempted. It is a sin if to we act on it to fantasize about it. Yeah. In the Old Testament, you know, I just thought of this. The Old Testament like definition is literally like missing the mark. That's what sin is. It's missing the mark. And when we don't have self-control and we go through our sinful desires, our fleshly desires, we miss the mark and not abide to Christ. 2 Timothy 1 7 For God gave us a spirit not of fear but of power and love and self control. Self control is from God. Like if you find yourself being tempted, give it to God. Take yourself out of the situation to where you could talk to God and be like, all right. I give you this. This yeah. is what's bothering me. A lot of us once, you know, talk about power and talk about love, but no one wants to talk about self-control. Even if it's not in a lustful way, I need self-control. Like when I'm about to say something that I shouldn't, you know, someone makes me mad. I think self-control is good. And patience could also be known as endurance. And it is a quality of self-restraint or of not giving way to anger. Yielding. You was talking about going to a place and yield to God. Literally prayer. I think in this day and age, we want to go to our friends and we want to go to our mentor or our pastor, but really you need to just go to a place where you just need to be alone and just yield to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yield to Jesus and pray what's wrong. A lot of times in the Bible, you see Jesus going away for this certain amount of time to be with his father and that sets up a principle of prayer like we need to be alone where we don't have any distractions and what does that have to do with patience well a lot of it actually because your prayers might not get answered like right away but it's coming and you need to be patient it's kind of like when I was a little kid I always waited for either Christmas or my birthday because I know that I was going to get a gift or a present and 
just like that we have to be patient proverbs 14 29 whoever is patient has great understanding but one who is quick tempered displayed folly the last one diligence and the definition we came up with is the effort to do one's part while keeping faith and reliance in god and i put this in quotations just simply not being lazy being productive <laughs> be productive i read this book where it talks about our our individual responsibilities my responsibility is being a preacher my responsibility is being a son my responsibility is being a church follower and a Christ follower and a student and I can't be lazy because that would be irresponsible Proverbs 13 4 the soul of the sluggard craves and gets nothing while the soul of the diligent is richly supplied sounds like you'd want to be diligent something that just popped up in my head when god gives you more responsibility the more you have to work and with the little responsibility you have, act as if there's more to be required. I thought of this the other day. When you have like less responsibility, you act as if it's the goal. Like to get things perfect, to make things organized, right? But when you have more, you start becoming more productive on task. Well, I won't say that. I would say I'd be more motivated if I had more things to do with like more anxious like for some of us not like her sorry guys the camera is having technical difficulty which it does in every video yeah it does we need to start a gofundme and they can help us buy a new camera if you want to help us out give your venmo <laughs> back to the masters yeah dustin's getting his masters at SUM Seminary and Theology University or in short School of Urban Missions it's a two year program for that degree what's so, your major? Christian leadership Dustin's been trying to figure out now that he was done with his bachelor's like what to do next and he feels called to get his master's say some prayers for us as we start our new school year broke college students woo yeah Finn. Nugget. Dude.